Hello everybody, I'd uh, just like to welcome you to our video uh, from Durham Business School. We're here today to talk about our Strategic Innovation Summative uh, on the assignment for 3D printers. Our team consisted of Asim, Naeem, myself, Matthew, Archon, Faisal and finally Sebastian. Our agenda today includes several items. The first thing we're going to do a quick introduction on 3D printers, followed by a history on 3D printing. Next we're going to have a look at the innovation frameworks and a literature review. Following this we're going to have a look at the applications and the impact of 3D printing. And finally we're going to have a look at the 3D printing and Anderson's long tail theory. <laughs> from digital data by printing layer by layer, i.e. additive versus traditional subtractive manufacturing techniques. It can make physical models of objects either designed with CAD or 3D programs or even scanned with a 3D scanner. It is used in a variety of industries including architecture, medical services, automotive education and consumer products. The Economist in February 2011 came up with an interesting quote. Three-dimensional printing makes it as cheap to create single items as it is to produce thousands and thus undermines economies of scale. This is a crucial point. It may have as a profound an impact on the world as the coming of the factory did. Just as nobody could have predicted the impact of the steam engine in, 19, in 1750, or the printing press in 1450, or the transistor in 1950, it is impossible to foresee the long-term impact of 3D printing. But the technology is coming and it is likely to disrupt every field it touches. Okay, so we can think of a printer, but the output is three-dimensional. If you can draw it, you can physically make it. As we can see here, this very complex shape was drawn on a computer and was printed out on a 3D printer. Objects are printed layer by layer using liquid polymers, i.e. plastic or even metal. 3D printers are smaller, affordable and relatively low cost, alternative for manufacturing processes and design prototyping. Now let us try to understand how 3D printers help to produce products like this. 3D printing allows designers and developers to go from flat screen to an exact part. How? In, with the help of the software, 3D printer, whoever is going to use 3D printer, they can actually use design softwares to come up with different kind of designs, then actually can print this kind of 3D products, check it, get a kind of feedback, change the design and actually can improve the quality of the product. Now this ability to quickly refine form, fit and function can significantly affect the production costs and time to market which are very important for today's organization. Moreover, in comparison to traditional manufacturing methods, 3D printing offers lot of other benefits also. First of all, there will be little or no waste. Secondly, the raw material cost is also low and thirdly, low yield, low cost processing. Now, so, which are the big players in this field now? There are a lot of top companies and their technologies, I'll clarify this. We have Stratasys who are using fuse deposition modeling technology. We also have Z Corporation who are using three-dimensional printing and 3D Systems. This company is using stereo lithography and selective laser centering. And then we have object geometrics who are using polyjet and polyjet matrix. Hmm. So how is this really made then? Good question. Let us look at a video and that will clarify you into your question. Essentially it's the same process but in microscopically thin layers. The machine spreads a fine dusting of the nylon powder, heats it till it's almost melting and then uses invisible lasers to melt the powder in a precise 2D shape that sets solid. Another layer of powder, another slice added, and so on, until a tenth of a millimetre at a time, a 3D shape is built. So, now if we look at the metal manufacturing process industry and focus on quality and price matrix like this, we can see that 
3D printer at this moment is offering a better quality and a lower price compared to other processes like molding and casting. How did 3D printing come into existence? Printing started off back in 800 BC and through time, 1796, lithography up to nowadays printers where you have your laser printer, your dot matrix and your inkjet printer. In 1976 was the development of the 2D inkjet printer on which the technology of 3D printing was based. In 1984 Charles, Hull's, Charles Hull invented stereolithography where he patented the, the technology in 1986. He first commercialised his 3D uh, printer in 1988. Shortly afterwards, similar technologies uh, were introduced by Scott Crump, who invented fused deposit modelling and founded the company Slatosis in 1989. And DTM introduced sintering laser systems to the market in 1992. 1993, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology patented three dimensional printing techniques, which was yet another technology to do 3D printing. And in 1995, Z Corporation licensed the technology and started to build 3D printers. So by 1996, three major products were on the market. One from Cytosis, the other one from 3D Systems, and the third from Z Corporation. By 2005, Z Corporation had launched a breakthrough product, which was the first high-definition 3D printer on the market. Other companies followed suit. And by 2006, there was a second breakthrough, which was an open source project called RepRap, where the aim was to develop a self-replicating 3D printer. The first version of RepRap was released in 2008, and it can manufacture 50% of its own parts. There was a second version of RepRap released in 2009, and they're currently working on a, a third version. You can now buy a printer for £325, but you have to construct it yourself. But there is a fully open source 3D printer called the Ultimaker and it costs in the region of a thousand pound. As time progresses and, and, the, and the product diffuses into the market, you would expect the price of the, the printer to drop considerably. 3D printing, is it radical or incremental? In early 1980s, 3D printing was definitely a radical innovation and it was based on new technologies which could be used in new markets and for new applications. The technology surely creates challenges for firms and at least partially destroys the usefulness for the existing capabilities. The technology has very profound implications for a variety of industries and its full impact cannot be estimated at this point in time. Nowadays, 3D printers are incrementally being improved and the technology is gradually getting better and cheaper slowly making its way to the mass market. Anderson Clark defined a model for, defi uh, for classifying innovations. This model has core concepts on horizontal axis and linkage, linkages between components and the concepts between them on the vertical axis. In that model, 3D printer comes into radical and groundbreaking section. And the reason is, we believe it's based on advancements in science. First. Second, it introduces new applications and consequently new markets. Third, it changes the whole paradigm and creates a new paradigm for creating components and producing products. Fourth point is 3D printer is considered as confidence destroying for some companies and markets. If you look at Friar and Blachandra model for types of innovation, we can put 3D printer as in a, in a creation uh, quadrant it's a new application for new customer groups. If you look at the 3D printer um, and the S-curve of technology lifecycle, which is actually explains the transition of a, of a new product from fluid stage through dominant design stage to mature stage, you would see that 3D printer comes in at the, at the initial stage of the dominant design. And the reason is because all technical solutions in the market are based on the same principle design that is layer by layer model of printing. Furthermore, the market has seen consolidation while the overall architectures of the 3D printers available are becoming increasingly standardized. 
why 3D printer is a disruptive technology? And the reason is, it allows for mass customization and thus targets new customers in new ways. It allows companies to profitably serve small and niche market segments. It separates product design from product manufacturing. It frees working capital as companies can now operate with little or no unsold finished goods. A number of issues relating to cost, materials, accuracy and strength of 3D products need to be overcome before this technology can achieve widespread adaptation. The diffusion of innovation is typically described as an S-shaped curve. According to Everett Rogers, 1962, a professor of uh, rural sociology, he produced a theory for the adoption of innovations among individuals and organisations. Technology adoption life cycle shows that the initial adopters were the innovators, who were the techies, who were the, in, who were the individuals who actually try the, the, the equipment or the, or the innovation. The next level is the early adopters, and they're the visionaries. They're the ones who want to get ahead to the rest of the, the, the market. After the early adopters comes the early majority, and these are the pragma uh, pragmatics who tend to stick with the herd. This is the mainstream market. The late majorities come after the early majorities, and they tend to hold on. They're more conservative about, about the, the, the product. And finally, we're le left with the laggards, and these are the skeptics. These tend to be the older generation. So where are we with 3D printers in respect of the S-shaped diffusion curve? In general, after the 3D printer was introduced, it appears to follow an erratic pattern of diffusion which, we can, which can be explained as a chasm. This occurs when there is a lack of interaction between subsequent groups of customers, the first type of customer, the technologists and the visionaries are still at the experimental phase and they are more concerned about their product being deemed radical enough. In this instance, the mainstream customers hardly communicate with the visionaries and are aware of how advanced the product is or whether it exists. When a technology enthusiast or a visionary cannot fulfil this role, a chasm occurs. Arguably 3D printers seem to be in a chasm and have not yet made it in the mainstream market. So how do we address this issue? 3D printers must become smaller and more affordable for both business to business and business to customers to start and adopt the product. Early adopters need to be stronger evangelists for this new technology and a push of 3D printing in education may enable the technology to enter the mass market. So why budget really? And what, who will actually use 3D printing? Well, there's two main uh, segments that will use 3D printing. One is what's called personal fabrication. Where like, just as you print papers from your home, off your printer, people will actually sit and print off 3D models in their own home that they may even use on their personal application or just put for present as toys for their children. The other segment is companies where it's limitless. You have uh, medical devices, jewelry, art, uh, architecture, prototyping, toys, manufacturing, and the list goes on. So what's the future impact of 3D printing? Well, first, 3D printing allows people, normal people, to make their own customized products right from home using their own personal PCs, which is actually a revolution. Moreover, companies can target niche markets and will reduce time to market as well as turnaround time. You have reduced inventory, reduced material, the labor, the uh, transportation cost, everything will be turned around. And with all of this, we'll have new markets, absolutely new markets. Instead of going to Amazon and just selecting something and waiting to it to be shipped, you can just check out the designs, see what you like, and print it off directly. That will also create a massive impact on retailers and manufacturers. Everything actually will be changed like it's more about the design and checking out what you want and having it outside of the printer at your home immediately. Well-known economic principles like economies of scale and entry barriers will be challenged. Following on what we have said earlier about the implications of 3D printing on common economic principles, we would now like to introduce the theory of the long tail 
that was coined by Chris Anderson in 2004. The theory of the long tail is that our culture and economy is increasingly shifting away from a focus on a relatively small number of hit mainstream products and markets at the head of the demand curve and toward a huge number of niches in the tail, towards a massive customization. As the cost of production and distribution fall, especially online, there is now less need to lump products and consumers into one-size-fits-all fit containers. In an era without the constraints of physical shelf space and other bottlenecks of distribution, narrowly targeted goods and services can be economically attractive as mainstream fare. Anderson's long tail theory essentially consists of three forces that for him are creating the era of long tails. First of all, he talks about the democratization of the tools of production, namely he gives the example of the PC that allows everyone to be a producer of digital content. Secondly, he talks about lowering the transaction cost of consumption by using the internet to distribute uh, goods digitally. The third force really is uh, about connecting consumers and uh, allowing them to find niche contents which will drive demand towards the niches. Niche. So it will go away from the main head of the, of the demand curve towards the tail of the, of the distribution. Anderson's long tail theory works very well with digital goods. I mean, of course, that is because people can produce contents digitally and they can distribute digitally. Uh, think of Amazon and the number of digital books or even uh, iTunes with all the music that is available. You have virtually zero inventory cost and, uh, and zero cost of distribution and the enormous profits. And of course, the most obscure songs or the most obscure books you can think of you will find in the niche uh, part of the tale. When you think of 3D printing, uh, that principle can be applied to the manufacturing of 3D physical goods as well. Because now, now the, it gives rise to a whole new era of applications and markets. So we believe uh, that there will be a, a massive emergence of entrepreneurs and new business models. For example, selling blueprints of products for home printing rather than physical products. Why should I actually wait for Amazon to deliver a new iPad stand if I can just download the 3D model and just print it off myself? I will save time, I will save cost, and I will be uh, much more satisfied uh, in terms of my needs and of course much faster as well. When you look at the implications of uh, Anderson's long tail theory on uh, manufacturing, we believe there might be a, a shift from low cost manufacturing countries partially back to high cost countries because of A, transportation costs, but more importantly because of labor costs, as the physical goods can now be printed, i.e. produced, uh, in small numbers with rather low cost. So there is no need to go to low cost countries to, for production. You can simply do it in high cost countries, saving of course a lot of time, again reducing time to market. Okay everybody, so 3D printing then. We've already heard a lot through this video, we'll just summarize a couple of the key points. 3D printing could be the next industrial revolution if a few hurdles are overcome. Expected time frame is 5 to 10 years. Massive impact on both consumers and producers with the potential to change long-standing economic principles and business models. Prices are slowly falling, approximately £1,000 in March 2012, with the technology constantly improving. Estimated tipping point for mass market diffusion is a unit price of approximately 300 to 400 US dollars. In about 3D printing, we went to Durham University Library. Have you ever heard about 3D printers? Yes. No. No? Okay. All I've seen is that it's used to print things, uh, to print objects, like an object, like it might be a, a tool or parts of a machine or a model or That's something true. like that. Right? So a 3D printer is just like a normal printer, mm -hmm. like like a paper kind of printer, like a chip printer, but um, instead of it printing out kind of like a document, you print out something that's like an object that's 3D. Imagine you had a 3D printer at home. What would you do with it? Oh, it, that would be quite a, an amazing uh, thing to have. Um, I could make 
any type of small toy or for my little cousins. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm not sure. It's I haven't really thought about it. It's such a new idea. Have you